had a diamond perfect picture album review let's chat about it hey friends what's going on john here from what's spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from hannah diamond this is her second full-length album uh she is a uk-based singer songwriter you're probably familiar with her if you are at all familiar with uh a london's uh pc music collective You'll probably know her if you are familiar at all with uh, the UK-based hyper-pop collective that is the PC Music Camp. They've been at it for years, and Hannah is honestly someone who's always stood out to me in their collective. I mean, they have a lot of artists under their belt, a lot of different styles, and a lot of them, you know, are very hit and miss for me. But Hannah was always some someone from the beginning that really stood out to me as a unique voice. Uh, she would show up on their compilations with tracks like high and fading away which were easily some standouts from those compilations if you haven't go check those comps out there's great material there now hannah on her own uh, released a few years ago her full-length debut reflections which at the time i enjoyed quite a bit but over the years i've kind of soured on it not that there's not any good tracks on there there certainly are but the very sleepy sort of lullaby set to pc music collectives production just i, I I don't know it's just i have to be in the mood for it these days but leading up to this thing i i really did think that it was time for hannah to shine on her own mostly because god every single from this new album was just so freaking good which leads me to this album perfect picture let's chat about it this album starts off with perfect picture this album's title track and honestly it's really really good i mean moments into this track i would already take anything on this track over anything on reflections there's a surprising amount of drama on this track and the bubblegum bass production and the layered synths make this come off like i don't know a call to action of sorts I love Hannah's vocals all around. The vocal effects that are used are used sparingly and effectively. And the PC music production that we get here, it does sound pretty, I don't know, exciting still to me. It's a fantastic intro. Affirmations is really, really great as well. This is a much busier, bubblier track. This kind of sounds like, I, I don't know. It's a much more bubbly and busy track. This sounds like a, just an all-out, just ballad to self-love done by PC Music standards. For the digital age, if you will. And it is pretty gigantic. This, to me, just comes off like everything that Hannah Diamond should be. This is her calling card. It's heady and colorful, but it's also super catchy and ridiculously charming. What a track. Uh, Poster Girl is just so freaking good. This is one of the most streamlined, instantaneous pop tracks I've heard all year. This beat is so pristine and sweet, and Hannah's performance is truly endearing. She is so good at making this very artificial pop sound uh, just really come off as more human and genuinely emotional. And want you to know, while it's toned down a little less bubbly, uh, it's just as captivating. The verses here, they're a little more direct, but they're just as sweet and likable. Uh, things do turn up for the chorus, though, because it hits hard. And I give Hannah so much credit for just making this come off so human. There's a lot of just universal feelings feels on tracks like this. This thing is packed full of anthems and I'm just so happy that they're here. And Flashback All Around is one of the coolest sounding tracks on this entire record. I love the production. I love the spacey synths. I mean, this is a pretty unique sounding pop album, but even this just sounds so different. It's got a little bit more meat to it. It's a little bit more upbeat. It's peppier. It's even a little heavier at times, mostly due to the synths. And I don't mean like heavy, heavy, but like compare this to the bulk of Reflections. I think it's easily the best Steve cut here. It is a hell of a track. And I don't have too much bad to report, but Hannah definitely still has some growing to do. Impossible is a definite negative standout. This is a little bit too meat and potatoes for me. The energy is down on this track as well. It's just not as sweet and likable as other tracks on this album. And the songwriting, my goodness, has taken a nosedive. Compared to the rest of this track, it's a little too sluggish for me. And Twisted is easily the worst track here. This is just a little too mellow for me, and I don't mind Hannah going for a more somber, downtrodden tune. She's actually done a lot of really good ones. As a matter of fact, there's a lot better of those on this album. We'll get to those. It's just so average, though, and the songwriting, while her heart is in the right place, it's definitely some of the weakest here. I think it's the worst track. Outside of that, though, this is some damn fine pop. Just really great pop from start to finish, I feel like. No FX is really great, too. This is another truly brilliant deep cut. 
I love the sentiment behind this track. This brings me back to the early days where the tracks like High really attracted me. The punchy synths are just so impactful, and Hannah is just at the center of all of this, and it's just so charming. The passion is real, and it is just so, so, so sweet. And then we have Lip Sync, which is one of the quirkier and weirder tracks here, which is something I'll always appreciate. But it's just as sweet and anthemic. The hooks continue to just be top-notch, and I feel like Hannah's personality is really coming out as well. This album has a ton more personality than a lot more hyper-pop than right now. And I don't give a damn, Staring at the Ceiling is track of the album. And it's one of the best pop tracks I've heard all year, hands down. Hannah here is at her most downtrodden and somber and lonely sounding, but here it works. The subtle beat and the slight production tricks add a lot of depth to this track as well. It's not one note or anything. It ends up being one of the biggest statements on this entire album, and the chorus switches things up just enough so it doesn't get boring. Divisible by Two is one of the most stripped down tracks here. It's basically just Hannah and her very subtle synths, but it ends up being really dramatic, shockingly so, uh, to the point where, like, this to me sounds like what she was going for on Reflections, but it's a much bolder sound. It's light and sweet and very dreamy, but once again, the chorus pops hard just enough, just enough to switch things up a little bit. And I don't know, just a lot of these tracks, including this one, just make me so happy and just make me just put this big, goofy smile on my face. And I was worried about Unbreakable as a finale leading up to it. I mean, this does come off like that sort of lullaby by way of PC music sound to it from a distance. And it's a sound that I'm fine with in small doses, but thankfully this works. It's tender, it's incredibly likable. Uh, as far as songwriting goes, it's one of the nicest and sweetest sentiments here. It's a fitting end to this very quality album. This is the debut, this is the album that I wanted Hannah to release as her debut album. This is her, you know, leaping ahead of the pack and really arriving. The hooks on here are super catchy. The lyrics are just what I wanted. These very emotional and very human lyrics against this very synthetic backdrop that really does work as a great duality once together. And yeah, there's one or two tracks that rub me the wrong way, but Hannah has grown immensely in a short period of time, and I'm just happy to hear that. I'm feeling a very decent eight on this album, but let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.